Welcome back to Weather on the Go, everybody. All your weather coverage. Welcome back to a good Monday morning here and hope everybody's having a great morning. We've had a couple storms moving across portions of the Missouri Valley. That will continue. We'll also be talking about a heat wave expanding with attendant storm chances as the heat wave breaks down through this weekend. So right now here early on this morning, we saw a complex of storms moving across eastern Nebraska and western Iowa through the Omaha region. That did slip down south and east toward the Kansas City, Missouri region as of this morning. But right now, currently, it is starting to push into the Ozarks region, into southern and central Missouri, and starting to weaken as it does so as well as we start to lose that low-level jet with this system. But earlier on here so far today, this morning, we did see seven wind, wind reports and two hail reports coming out from this storm complex, especially across far western Missouri near the Kansas City region on southward through this morning. So it did produce some wind damage out there with wind gusts reported of 60, 65, even 70 miles per hour as well. So going through the rest of today, we have that slight risk with the weakening complex of storms back all the way south here towards Towards the southeastern Missouri region and then we have more of a marginal risk across the lower Ohio Valley up into portions of the Northeast and up here as well into the upper Midwest around the Twin Cities region eastward just to the west of Green Bay we have to be watching out for some stronger thunderstorms today and going through the afternoon we really see that complex pretty much dissipating across southeastern Missouri as it continues to trek its way further off to the south and east and we're left with generally quiet conditions this afternoon across the mainland United States, but as we get closer toward the evening hours, we're going to start to see a couple areas pop off with some showers and storms. The first area up here into the western High Plains, South Dakota getting into western Nebraska here. We could start to see some stronger wind gusts and hail with this, and then watching for more stronger storms across the eastern Ohio Valley, especially back here into Ohio, West Virginia getting into central Kentucky as we get into this evening and the overnight hours. The tendency will be for these storms to produce more damaging winds and hail than tornadoes, but a Tornado threat is possible. It is just very low. It's less than a 2% chance later today. But the big story of the week will be the heat. Here are the weather alerts and the uh, heat headlines across the United States. Wherever you see the orange there, that is heat advisory criteria. And wherever you see the pink, that is excessive heat warning criteria. So we are starting to see more of that building across the Great Plains slowly but surely, and I do have a feeling this will be expanding in real estate as we go further throughout this week. And the reason being is this center of high pressure here is into the eastern Four Corners region today as a 600 decameter high pressure system. So this is about as strong as it can get, folks. That's at the top end of the scale. And then as we go through the week, it's going to start to expand east, but also the high pressure across the western Atlantic will retrograde back west and expand as well. So these will kind of collide together and by the end of the week on Friday, July 28th here, we're going to start to see more of that heat expanding across our southern and central areas here into the United States with the northern periphery setting up here into New England, the upper Great Lakes into the upper Midwest by later on this week and into this upcoming weekend. So what does this mean for our temperatures? Well, folks, it's going to be hot. So we're going to see 90s across the middle of the country. Triple digit heat can be expected from Kansas down into Oklahoma and Texas. I mean, folks, it's going to be 105 in Amarillo today, 102 in the DFW Metroplex, 106 in Wichita Falls, and then further north, 102 up here into Topeka, Kansas, as we go into this afternoon. But you notice with still the heat not building quite as far north and east into the Ohio Valley, or the northeast, we're still going to have those typical summertime highs into the middle and upper 80s, a little bit of humidity there but certainly not as extreme as the areas further to the west. But then as the heat builds through Wednesday, that 90 degree line just surges all the way to the U.S. Canadian border here and the triple digits as well. We could be closing in on the triple digits up here into Minneapolis, St. Paul on Wednesday. We're up to 98, 93 in Rochester, Minnesota. We're up to 91 in Chicago and then closing in on 100 there in St. Louis. We're at 96, 97 degrees for your high 
high temperature Wednesday afternoon. And then there we go again, more triple digit heat building across portions of the Ohio Valley, the Missouri Valley, and back into the Plain States as we go into Friday. But further north, you see it's a little bit cooler. Well, that's going to be because of debris clouds from uh, MCS's mesoscale convective systems and showers and storms you know rounds of those moving over the northern periphery of that ridge later this week and you see the mid-level jet stream orientation during the middle of the week by Wednesday we have a short wave moving across the southern Canadian prairies and up here into the northern plains that will provide us with some cloud cover and some shower and storm opportunities especially across the Dakotas Montana and Wyoming by Wednesday and then we'll start to see that kind of transition further off to the east later this week and with that here as we go into the middle of the week especially here starting Tuesday we have another slight risk for severe weather this is mainly across the Dakotas here so the Aberdeen region down towards Sioux Falls we have the threat for some severe weather that's a level two out of five on the scale damaging winds and hail will be the main mode of severe weather on Tuesday an isolated tornado cannot be ruled out here anywhere in the green or yellow shade of color but I do think that the tornado threat is extremely low on Tuesday. And you can see where the heavy rains will be setting up, mainly centered across eastern South Dakota, getting into northeast Nebraska and northwestern Iowa there. That's where we could see a couple areas pick up over two inches of rain, perhaps, through your Tuesday night into Wednesday morning time frame. And then as we go into Wednesday, that short wave pushes off to the east, and we have more energy pushing down into the Midwest and the Ohio Valley region with a slight risk of severe weather from eastern Iowa all the way through the Chicagoland area, Indianapolis, and then eastward towards portions of Toledo, Ohio. As we go into Wednesday, again, the main mode will be damaging winds and hail. An isolated tornado or two cannot be ruled out, but we will be watching the day on Wednesday, see if we have any upgrades to this severe weather risk as we get closer. But right now, looking here, it looks like if you live in the Chicagoland area, uh, Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, Indiana, over here to Toledo, Detroit, those will be the areas hardest hit as we go into Wednesday, especially earlier on in the day. I think Wednesday morning in toward the midday hours, that's where we'll start to see the showers and storms move on through the Ohio Valley. And we could be seeing a couple inches of rain through that time frame as well. So some locally heavy downpours, some minor flooding will be possible through the midweek time frame. But then looking at the Climate Prediction Center's long Long range forecast. This takes us into next weekend and then beyond through August 2nd. And you start to see above normal temperature trends across the southeastern United States continuing, which means our heat wave is not going anywhere anytime soon, at least for the areas down here into the southern and southeastern most areas in our United States. But we are trending a little bit slightly below normal with our temperatures up here into New England and then back across portions of the upper Great Lakes as we close out July and move into the first few days of August and that's because of an active storm track so we're going to see more above average precipitation up here into the northern plains the midwestern regions the Great Lakes and into the northeast that's where we're going to have rounds of MCSs with mesoscale convective systems with an attendant threat for he heavy rainfall, damaging winds, hail, and tornadoes as we go through early August. But underneath that ridge, it's going to be very dry. So we're going to see below normal precipitation along the Gulf Coast, much of the southeast, and that stretches towards portions of North Texas, and then also very dry up here into the Pacific Northwest, where we're watching for an increasing fire weather risk across portions of Washington State, Oregon, Idaho, and then down further south into Nevada as we go through August 2nd. And looking at the jet stream this weekend, the 29th and 30th of July, it starts to take more of a zonal flow. So we have more of a flat jet stream from west to east across portions of the northern United States over top of that ridge of high pressure. That will start to break down as we go into early next week on Monday to close out the month of July on the 31st with more of a trough developing in southeastern Canada. And that ridge kind of backing its way further west again into the Four Corners region and the Southern Plains. And it's going to be hot again or continuing to be hot across these regions as we go into early August. Turning to the tropical weather update, this has, uh, you know, some good news with it. The National Hurricane Center has decreased significantly the probabilities of tropical development over the next seven days down to a 20% chance now as it enters into the Caribbean over the next few days. 
And this looks right now like a pretty robust tropical wave, but as it enters into the eastern and especially the central Caribbean through the Lesser Antilles and then over the open waters, I know the waters are warm here, but the wind shear is going to be a problem. So looking here on Tuesday, uh, tomorrow, you see this crossing over the Lesser Antilles, uh, Antilles here through Barbados and a couple of those other islands there as well. This will be crossing into the eastern Caribbean on Wednesday and then by Thursday entering into the central Caribbean and it's going to be encountering a lot of wind shear in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. So if you guys don't know, wind shear tears apart tropical systems, whether it's a depression, a tropical storm, or a hurricane, it just tears it apart and doesn't have a lot of organization with it. So we see a lot of shear the middle of this week. And regardless of the warm waters, I mean, it's boiling in the Gulf of Mexico like I've ever seen it before, the Western Atlantic and the Caribbean. It's extremely warm, but that's just one ingredient that goes into forecasting hurricanes and stuff like that across these areas. So right now, it's great news for the Caribbean and the Gulf and even the United States as well, because it, this is not really going to have a chance to organize over the next few days. We'll keep an eye on it, but right now the warm waters here are the only thing going for this system to keep it sustained and it looks like it's going to lose the battle as we move forward well thank you guys so much for subscribing uh, be sure to if you are new to the channel though to subscribe to the channel again i appreciate all the new subscribers along the way as well and be sure to press the thumbs up button it helps to get this weather information out to more and more people and if you want to follow me on twitter for additional weather forecast updates, hit the description down below the video. You'll find the link to Twitter there and follow me at HWeather420. I definitely appreciate that as well. Well, have a great Monday, everybody, and I'll see you all in the next video.